What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Far Rock 22 m a.k.a. Infamous Owen, Infamous underscore Owen on IG. So we back at it today again. This is the second part of how I started my business on Rikers Island. Sorry for the delay, but, you know, once again, just a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, I'm trying to do other things right now. But here we go. I left y'all off at New Levels, New Devils. So let me backtrack. Now, after we kicked off everything, after the website was done, you know, we got the flyers made. Um, now everything is ready to go. You know, it's just like, you know, in them old school cartoons, if you build it, they will come. So that's how it is. So now we got to get the word out because nobody really knows about this business. And um, everybody that I mentioned it to, they said it was a good idea. You know, they said, yo, I never heard nothing like that. So this is how me and Mike knew that we were cooking with gas because a lot of people that we presented this idea to while we were building this business, uh, the person that we went to to get the flies done, the representative that we spoke to on GoDaddy.com where we needed help uh, setting up the website, a lot of people was intrigued by this idea. So we knew we, we were sitting on something, you know? So uh, now we gotta execute this. So um, he started the IG page. Well, and I started the Facebook page. So it's funny, you could probably still find it on IG. The 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 page might still be there. Uh real time package, just look it up. It still might be there. But I know I deleted the um the Facebook page because you know we were no longer in business after 2020. But anyway, um so now we gotta get the word out there. We trying to, you know, uh hand out these flyers, we advertising online. And then we learned of the Google ad word, uh, ad, ad verb or ad word. You know, that's what we learned about. And that actually promotes your business. It pumps your business. So once we did that, we noticed that we started getting a few more customers. We started getting more emails, you know, um, more confirmation orders, things like that. And, um, you know, everything is running smooth. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say that, you know, we was booming and we was making a lot of money and we was making G's and all of that. It wasn't really like that. You know, it, honestly, I thought we was going to make a lot more money than we would have, but we made something. You know what I'm saying? But um, we put a lot of money into promotional, you know what I mean, to promotional use. And that's the thing, too. When you start a business, you have to promote it right. A lot of your budget should be towards promotion, honestly, because how can people buy it? They don't know, you know, so um, we definitely uh, we reached out to a lot of people and um, I don't know how he did, but he actually reached out to Star from Star and Buck Wow. And, um, you know, dude, he had our, uh, he had our flyer on his site back in the day. This was like around 2016, 2017. So um, he would advertise it on his uh, podcast. I don't know. He wouldn't say the words, but he would just have the uh, the screen record on there. He would have the uh, the thing scroll by, whatever, the real-time package. And, you know, when we seen that on Star's uh, podcast, that was like, oh, man, we finally here. Um, I got a picture of it, too. You know, I might put it as the uh, thumbnail. I might use that as a thumbnail. I don't know if that's going to be an issue. But, you know, he definitely promoted our stuff. He definitely helped with that, you know, um... And ever since we did that, we didn't get, how can I say, um, clientele. You know, we didn't get a lot of customers in New York. But once he put that up, we started getting calls from other, other people from other states. Like, for example, somebody in Virginia seen that ad. And they hit us up asking if we can do t-shirts and send them out there. So we like... You know, we don't really do that. We really compliment the Rikers Island, but that also gave us another idea because there's people that need socks, t-shirts, underwear, everywhere, you know? So um, we changed it up on our site saying that we could um, we'll deliver, not deliver, well, we just ship out of state, you know, clothes, goods, things like that. So um, like I said, everything is running smooth. We about, we're, getting, we're averaging about, say, two to three orders a week mainly on Rikers Island. You know, we didn't we didn't have like a lot of clientele on the boat. We didn't have a lot of clientele in the Manhattan house or anything like that. I have delivered to those places though. 
I did deliver the Manhattan house a few times. I did deliver the VCBC, AKA the boat. But most of our clientele revolved around Rikers Island. So, you know, it was like, you know, every time we, we get an email, you know, we, it was just more excitement. Like, yo, this thing is really kicking off. Like, yo, we built this and it's working. Like, yo, we, we actually seeing something from it. So, you know, I was the guy responsible for the deliveries. Mike, he mostly handled the clerical work. You know, he handled the emails. He handled the, the, the website, you know, things like that. You know, if a customer had an issue, they'll call him. And, you know, I cleaned it up and things like that. So, you know, we, we basically had a system and everybody, it works for everybody. You know, I'll do the hard work. I'll do the deliveries because that's what I like to do. I know the system. So we, you know, we put it out like that. Like, you know, I do the deliveries. You handle the clerical work. You know what I'm saying? He did that very well. So everything is flowing smooth. Now, here's the thing. Now, the Rikers Island staff, they starting to become a little bit more familiar with me. They starting to see me more, you know, they know that I'm not visiting, but they're curious on why is this guy always up here like every week? And he doesn't visit. He's just in and out. Like, who's he dropping these packages to? So, and some of the COs was cool, actually, you know. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. It came to a point where I really didn't want to do the deliveries anymore. And the reason why, I'm going to tell you why, because... The CEOs started trying to get into my business a lot. And not only that, they started trying to get into my business, but sometimes they will make my job a little bit more difficult. Now, let me explain. See, when you're going to Rikers Island, you got to arrive on a Q100 bus or the Q101. I believe it's the Q100 to Rikers Island. But anyway, when you get on that bus, wherever it comes from, once it gets to Rikers Island, it stops. Officer, officer comes out, let you know, listen, you have an amnesty period to get rid of any contraband that you have on this bus. But after you, whatever, they empty out the bus to let you know that, okay, you know, we're going to let you in the building. Now these dogs come searching you. Now, I don't have a problem with dogs. I love dogs. But these dogs in particular, they always, you know, they always like do a little extra sniff or something like that once they do a little extra sniff on you the CEOs is pulling you off the line and searching you even harder see my thing is is that they knew that I was not there to visit anybody they knew I wasn't bringing contraband there they knew that I had a business revolving around bringing uh, clothes and items to inmates now of course I understand you know from the officer's point of view you can't trust anybody you know this is a business that people bring drugs in there all the time. People bring contraband in there all the time. So I understand. But it comes to a certain point where it's like, yo, what can I bring in there if I'm only bringing items to the to the first window to bring through the CEOs? They search everything. I'm not bringing in no contraband. Well, anyway, let's just say that once you get off this uh, bus, they make you line up in a circle. They make you, uh, you know, form a circle and they walk around with these dogs you know, it's like a different dog every day or a different dog every circle. But they, they, the dogs walk around, sniff everybody. But for some reason, they will always try to double back on me. You know, like, hey, you know, the, the dog will walk past me and they'll bring it back. And I come back around here and bring the dog to sniff my leg or something. The dog do a little sniff. They say, OK, step off the line They bring you in the bathroom and make you uh, go a little harder. They don't they don't strip search you or nothing like that. Sometimes they might. But. For the most part, they go hard on the search, make you sign this paper to say that, hey, uh, you know, this person that you're visiting or coming to see, they could be reprimanded if, you know, you had contraband or you might have to get a window visit. Like I said, I never went to go visit. I was just strictly there to drop off the items. So, you know, it became annoying. So what I had to do, I decided that I'm going to pay somebody to make these runs for me. Now, in this business or any business, when you're doing something, you have to find reliable people. And I'm telling you, there's not a lot of reliable people. Um, I had one lady, well, one girl, she used to uh, do the deliveries. Uh, name was Denise. Denise, cool girl, man. You know what I mean? Like, that's probably the only person that made it happen nine times out of ten. You know what I'm saying? And she couldn't make it happen. You know what I'm saying? She, she probably had a daughter to take care of, her kids to take care of. 
but she made it happen other like 900 percent whereas like i didn't even know her that well but all the other people that i knew well that had cars that probably needed a little money in their pocket you know i reached out to them first you know but like i said a lot of people are not going to mess with you especially when they know you you know in business especially like uh servicing businesses do not expect the hood or do not expect your peers to be your main customers that's not that's not going to happen that is not going to happen let me tell you when i was starting this business i'm thinking like yo there's a lot of people in rockaway that go back and forth to rikers island there's a lot of people that know me that i know you know what i'm saying and i'm not looking at it as a dollar i'm looking at it as like yo there's supposed to be some type of what's that word i'm looking for uh reciprocation i guess or you know but whatever basically we're supposed to have like some type of understanding people knew that i had a business that serviced rikers and i'm charging cheap prices and i'm bringing it up there i'm thinking like yo the hood gonna show love no <laughs> that's not what happened in fact probably like three people from this neighborhood use my business three people two that i know one that i didn't know so a lot of my business actually came from staten island the bronx uh a, a handful in brooklyn but mostly a lot of a lot of people from staten island actually use my business and um which was funny because like i said i i thought i was gonna go into this business thinking that you know everybody's gonna be supportive you know, everybody gonna rock with you. You know what I'm saying? The hood gonna rock with you. Your peers gonna rock with you. And here's the thing. I'm not mad at them. You know, don't don't get mad at your peoples if they don't, you know, uh, use your business or whatever. Don't take it personal. You can if you want to, but taking it personal will only make you more upset. And it'll only make you more spiteful. So with things like that, you just say, hey, you know what? Charge it to the game because you're still gonna get money anyway. But like I said, when you're doing a business, a lot of people is not gonna, a lot of people you know, not gonna really mess with it. Just fool for thought, you know? Focus on the outside. Because um, if I would have known that, I would have went out first instead of doing it in the hood first. You know what I'm saying? In fact, a lot of people in the hood couldn't believe that I had a business. You know, some people respected it. A lot of people respected it. I'm not even gonna say that. Like, a lot of people actually gave me good words. You know, they was real happy for me. You know, and I definitely love that feeling. But then you have some, and you know, if you know, you know. And some people, hey, how's your little business? Or what's, what's up with that little Rikers Island business thing? You know, try to downplay it, you know. I know the little slip remarks. But at the end of the day, you know, um, it was a lot coming on with this shit. So like I said, everything was cool. We was making money. Things are flowing smooth. The only thing I didn't really like about it is going up to that island at the point. Because, like I said, the CEOs, not all of them. Because there's some cool-ass CEOs. There's some CEOs that actually respected it. They're like, yo, wow, that's that's ill. I never thought of that. Or, you know, wow. And then you had some CEOs that probably was like, you know what? My nephew can do this. You know, let me try to cut his throat. Or let me try to make his shit difficult. So, you know... He could be, you know, so we he doesn't have any encouragement to come here, you know. And I ain't going to lie, a lot of times that's what I feel that was going on. So I used to send other people because I guess the guy used to see in my face. And and maybe I might be, maybe, maybe I might be going crazy. Maybe that might not be true. Maybe it might be a coincidence. I don't know. But from the way it felt like, they became too familiar. And it was like, you know what? Search him hard every time. Search her, make sure the dogs get a little extra whiff on him. Even though, I, come on, bringing drugs on the Rikers Island, that's crazy. But some people do it. And that's what I'm saying. So that's why I never looked at them like, all right, because they got to treat everybody a certain way. It's no, it's no special privileges unless you got a badge or unless you work there. So I definitely understand. But these are the new levels to new devils because it's not somebody in the street trying to get at me. You know what I'm saying? It's actually somebody who works there trying to disrupt my business so and like i said which is okay because in business or in anything that you do this is what's going to happen you're going to have people that's going to try to get in your way you're going to have people that's going to try to disrupt you but back to the story now so you know me and mike like i said we busting it out making these moves everything is going smooth 
You know, we got a girl to do the deliveries when she can. You know, everything is just lining up perfectly, man, you know? And like I said, it's not like we became thousandaires overnight and things like that. One thing I can say from this experience, right? I loved it because it gave me a feeling of independence. It gave me a feeling to say that I'm a boss, you know what I'm saying? Like, not no street boss, or, you know, because if you're running a crew, you're a boss, but you're not really a boss, you know what I'm saying? But when, you in the, when you're in the legit world and you're doing legit business and call yourself a boss, that shit, man, that was the best feeling. So I encourage anybody, anybody, if you have a skill, you have something you can sell legally, pay that tax money and you do it, man. You can do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's not hard. But it's no better feeling of accomplishment when you do it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm encouraging you to do. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the business, it ended due to, you know, the COVID situation because um they wasn't letting visitors bring items onto Rikers Island. So you had to mail it. So I figured that, you know, now it's to a point where they cutthroat me 